believe. I do. I believe this book. I believe in a place called heaven. Amen. I believe in a man called Jesus. I believe in a place called Calvary. And I believe that he gave his life for me. His life for mine. Amen. I believe that. You say, well, you've been taught that. Well, I have been. That's right. I have been taught that. I was taught that as a boy, and I was taught that as a teenager. I was taught that as a young man. But once God once God saved my soul and I surrendered to the ministry, I began to study the Bible, and the Holy Spirit of God taught me. Even more important than a man teaching me or a Sunday school teacher or a preacher, I read in the Bible, and the sweet Holy Spirit of God taught me, amen, that these things are true and these things are accurate. And I believe that He is all that matters. When this thing is over, think about that for just a minute. When this thing's over, I mean, life is, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Hey, man. Uh, and life don't last very long. Now, you young people think, my goodness, you, when I get as old as you are, Brother Robert, I'll be, boy, I'll be tired of living already. Well, you wait till you get my age and you'll want a whole lot more years to go. Hey, man. Uh, but, but life is short. It really is. And, uh, but eternity is a long time. So think about how you live your life here. Some people live their life like they're never going to stand before God, like there is no judgment, like, you know, like this mentality that, that, well, we're all God's children, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, we're all going to heaven when we die, you know, that you had to be really, really bad not to go to heaven, and you can be mediocre if all of everybody likes you, you're going to heaven, you can be really, really bad and go to hell. That's what the world thinks. That's what the world thinks. And, and, but the world is wrong. Always has been. Amen. And the Bible's right, and the world is wrong. And uh, if me and you don't agree with the Bible, then we're wrong also. The Bible is always right. Luke chapter number 10. One thing. I want to preach about one thing this morning. Amen. One thing. One thing. One thing can change a life. One thing can destroy a life. One thing can destroy a marriage. One thing can destroy a home. Young people, listen to me real quick. Young people, if you're a young person in the building, if you're under 25 years old, I want you to listen real quickly, all right? Young people, if you're 26, you're middle-aged, all right? But 25 and under, y'all listen real quick. One, one thing can ruin your life forever. One thing can ruin your life forever. Amen. Amen. Now, Christian, think about this for a minute. Saved person, think about this for a minute. One thing you do, one thing you say, one time coming in the house of God and and, and, and greeting a visitor with an attitude, one thing can cause a person to reject God, reject church, reject religion, and reject the Bible, and go to hell for all eternity. One, it's amazing what one thing can do. I heard a preacher say one time, we was on the golf course, and he said, you know, if we're not careful, he said, we can say one thing on the golf course that would take another preacher years to fix. Amen. Right. You, pre- you men that stand up here and give devotionals, one thing, say one thing wrong. Amen. One, it's amazing what one thing can do. It could do great things, couldn't it? One thing could do great things. One decision you make this morning could change your life, the lives of your family, and the lives of your children in this life and the next. One thing. One thing can ruin it. One thing. That's what I'm going to preach about this morning. One thing. All right, see how long it takes to preach on one thing. All right. Luke chapter number 10, we're going to pick up in verse number 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hast left me to serve alone? Oh, my goodness. Why is it that I have to do everything? Amen. That she has served me alone. Amen. Tattletale. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Why didn't she just ask Jesus to help? 
Lord, I got a pot roast ain't done yet. Could you speed that thing up a little bit? Lord, I got the, the, the bathroom there. You got all this company I wasn't expecting. The bathroom trash ain't been taken out. Toilets ain't been cleaned in two weeks. And, 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 and make up there. Lord, could you just clean the bathroom for me right quick? Could you do it? No, she wanted to tell on somebody. We call that busybody. Amen. Yeah, move on. We're going to be happy this morning. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Can't you just hear the tone in his voice? It's hard to read. It's hard to read something and understand the emotion, right? When you text me, if you're mad, it, it, it just all sounds like love and roses to me. Brother Robert, we, me and my, we hate you. We hate your guts. We're never going to come back to church. We hope you die. We hope this. And I'm going, ha! Ah! I'm texting back, LOL. That's funny. I just read love into everything. And people text me and say, oh, I didn't mean it that. That's why I don't like text. Every, I'm short, boom, 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 boom. I like to say short and sweet. But none of my texts, when I go back and read them, sound sweet. They all sound mad. And I don't mean them to be. I promise you, if I'm going to be hateful and mean to you, it's not going to be where you can save that and use it against me. Amen. Amen. It's going to be face to face. So it's your word against mine when you go tell everybody. I'm not going to give you ammunition, but he's, I can just hear his tone in, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Let's pray. Lord, thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for the sweet music we've heard in here this morning, uplifting your holy name and bragging on Jesus and singing about heaven. God, I pray, Lord, this morning that you would bless the preaching. Help me, Lord, to preach. God, you know more about this message and more about this text and this subject, Lord, than I'll ever know. God, I just pray that you'd help me this morning. Lord, I pray, dear God, today that a life would be changed, that an eternal destiny, that somebody gets saved this morning, God, and, and, and change their future home from hell to a glorious place called heaven. Lord, we love you. And, Lord, I need your help today, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you to understand something right here. Uh, a lot of preachers, and I've probably done it myself, I got to examining this text, and, and uh, the one thing is not something that she has received. You know, he said, Mary hath chosen this good part, right? He said, one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which should not be taken away from her. For years I've heard and I've read and I've understood that he's this one thing, this good part, was the salvation and all that, and a preacher could take and preach that and spiritualize that, but the salvation was not the context here. Serving and working and doing and being troubled and being cumbered about with all the things that goes on in life. Our life is made up of chaos a lot of times. And uh, uh, I bought Tiffany a notepad one time and it said chaos coordinator. Amen. But life is made up. But one thing is needful. And he said, and she hath chosen that good part. It wasn't something that one thing that was needful was not something that she received. It was something she done. Right. Amen. Something she was doing. Now he told Martha, he said, Martha, the uh, Bible says, verse number 4, he said, Martha was cumbered about much serving. Uh, our lives are made up of several things, but, but he, right here, she was cumbered about much serving. That, that cumbered means she was loaded down. She carried a self-imposed, listen up now, a self-imposed heavy load, right? A self-imposed. She was too busy to sit and hear preaching. She was too busy to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to His Word. She was too busy about serving is not a bad thing, but it's not all about serving. It's not all about serving. It's about one thing. Amen. He said one thing. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. All right. Some of y'all act like you got in bed late, had to get up early, and had to sleep on the concrete block the whole time. Ain't bad. All right. Just if y'all, hey, y'all don't, y'all don't liven up a little bit. We're gonna bring Victor in here. <laughs> I'm gonna get me a red suit, boy. It's gonna be y'all. Hey, bad. But it was what she was doing. But she was cumbered about. She had too much going on and didn't have time for God. Does that ring a bell? Hey, man. So I've been there. I've been. There. Sometimes I still get there. I get too much going on and not bad things. I'm not out doing wickedly, but I'm working, trying to make a living, and doing things, serving the Lord, and all this kind of stuff. And I don't take the time. I don't stop and give God His time because, brother Justin, He is really all that matters. Hey, man. Hey, jobs come and jobs go. Money in, money out. This and I know it takes money to live. 
live. And it takes money to survive. But brother and sister, it takes God to live. It takes God to survive. You'll dry up and die as a Christian if you don't feed your soul with the things of God. She's cumbered about. He said, you got too much going on uh, and all your services don't going to amount to anything. You don't get ever, ever get anything finished. If you just, you're cumbered, you're loaded down. And then he said, verse 41, and Jesus answered and said, and to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Now that careful, what it means is you have too many things going on. It, the basic, it really means you got too much anxiety. Now I didn't have time this morning to look up the statistics and all that kind of stuff. I will the next time I preach this. But there are more people on anxiety medicine today than ever. And a big part of it is, I understand, and, and I'm not, don't misunderstand me, I'm for medicine. Don't misunderstand me, I'm not. But I'm saying a lot of that is caused because we're cumbered. Man, we're careful. We got more going on than what our bodies, we got more stress in our life, we got more problems, we owe more money. We got more payments. We got more things going on. We got more people pulling us in a million different directions. I mean, my God, we owe hundreds of thousands of dollars here, hundreds of thousands here. We got these bills to pay. We got this. We got church. We got, we got this. And our pastor, he's so overbearing. If we're not there, he might text us and ask us where we were. I got Sunday. I, so, I got to fit my Sunday school lesson in somewhere. I got a squeeze. We ain't got time to really serve God, so what we'll do, we'll ease our own conscience. We'll slide in for by, by our church every week. We're going we're, we're to make God, we're going to make an hour for God now. We're going to slide in there and make an hour for God. We're, 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 we're too anxious. We got too much going on. We got this pulse this way. Got this pulse this way. And we go to the doctor and, and we say, we say, I went, man, I went to the doctor. It's about a year ago or something like that. And I said, I can't breathe. I said, I can't breathe. I feel like all the time I'm going, just to catch my breath, just to catch. My doctor looked at me and said, anxiety. You got too much going on. You're under too much stress. The human body is not made to take this kind of stress over prolonged periods of time, so we have to take medicine. I mean, my goodness, own a business and pastor a church and all of this and all of that and all of this, we're not made for this. We're just not made for it. We're made to have a job and we're made to have a family. We're not made to have children in three or four different homes. We're not made to have four or five different husbands or wives. That's not what we're made. Now, I'm not beating up on you. I'm saying we're not made for that. We're not made for that kind of stress. And so, therefore, we're cumbered and we're careful. And it's all self-imposed. I mean, that's the world that we live in. Our kids, we ain't got enough money to, uh, to, to have a decent vehicle. But our kids has got to have a $200 pair of shoes and a $300 shirt and this and that. We're, we just ain't made for this kind of stress. And therefore, we have to medicate. But that's anxious. That's anxiety. He said, what he's telling her, he says, Martha, you got too much going on. He's talking, he's talking about real life here, people's home. You got too much going on. And we can all identify with that. Whether you're on medication or not, we can all identify that I'm busy. I got more going on than what I can do. I'm starting to wish there was eight or nine days in a week so I could get something done. If any of you men have been up there to look at my shop, Brother Noble, bless his heart, spoke the truth one day. He said, I will testify. Before we started the building project, Brother Roberts, his shop was nice and organized and clean. You go in there now, it looks like several explosions happened. I don't have time. I got a 2018 Bass Tracker. This is probably a sin right here. I've had it on the lake one time this year. I got a nice camper up there. I've had it out one time this year. Why? I got too much going on. Hey, man, it's life. But he said, all of that stuff, he's telling her, he said, look, Martha, all that stuff ain't needful. 
It's fine to have it, but it all ain't needful. And he said, look what Mary's doing. Mary's not worried about the crock pot. Mary's not worried about the bathroom. Mary's not worried about the mowing the grass. Mary's not worried about everything and every, the grapes and everything looking right. Mary's worried about one thing, and that's what we need today is one thing. We need one thing to be the priority. That's what we need, one thing. Now, it takes many things to live. It really does. It takes jobs. It takes families. and it ta- Look, you have to play the hand you're dealt. Wherever you are right now, you can't go back and do before. There's not any do-overs. You can't go back and, 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 and the day after high school graduation pick up from there. You can't go back and pick up from when you was 14 years old. You can't go back and pick up from five years ago before you married him. <laughs> hey, man. You say, there's no turning back, sister. I mean, here we are. Amen. But that's where we are. You can't go back and relive your mistakes. But you can start right now and make a decision today, one thing. One thing's going to be the priority in my life. One thing's going to have the preeminence in my life. One thing. Hey, I'll preach a little bit this morning about... One thing. He said, you're cumbered, and he said, you're careful, which means too anxious. He told her in verse 41, she, he said, you're troubled. Some people come to church every Sunday, and they can't get nothing from God because they're troubled about Monday. Amen. They're troubled about bills. What's a mess when you can't come to church and just block everything out and, and hear from heaven because we're troubled about everything else. Troubled about this, troubled about that, troubled about one thing, troubled about last week, troubled about next week, troubled about this family, troubled about these people, troubled about everything. He said, it's too much, Martha. He said, one thing is needful, not one thing to receive, but one thing to do. She sat at the feet of Jesus and heard His Word. One thing. I'm going to turn over here in the book of Psalms. I'm going, to, I'm going to read a scripture over here. It's Psalms 27, verse 4, if you want to write it down. But he says, One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He said, There's one thing that I ask of the Lord, and that one thing I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. He said, There's one thing that I ask of God, and that I could be faithful to church, and that I could be faithful to the Lord, and I could be faithful to God's house, and that I would serve God in His holy place. That's one thing that I ask of the Lord. Boy, praise the Lord. One, thank God for the one thing. He said, one thing I ask, that's to serve the Lord. God, give me the place. I wonder how many in here this morning has ever had a prayer like this. Don't raise your hand, but how many of you have ever had a prayer like this? Lord, give me a place to serve. Lord, give me the ability to serve. That's what, that's what our lives ought to... Let's just cut to the chase right now and get to the end. Let's, let us, the Bible says let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The whole matter is this. We ought to be serving the Lord. Whatever, everybody can't be the pastor. Everybody can't be the song leader. Everybody can't be this. Everybody can't, but everybody's got a place to serve the Lord. God's made sure that everybody has that place to serve the Lord. He said one thing. The psalmist said one thing. I didn't ask for riches. I didn't ask for fame. I didn't ask to be king. I didn't ask to be the psalmist. I didn't ask all this. One thing. And it was probably, this is written by David, it's probably whenever he was out uh, uh, watching those sheep and when he was defending those sheep against the bear and the lion and learning how to play the harp and pray it and developing as a young man. Listen up, young man. As a young man, he was developing his relationship with the Lord. Amen. Probably somewhere out there in the quiet on a hillside. He probably said, Lord, I just want one thing. Give me a place to serve you. Amen. God, that's one thing. Yes, happiness would be great. A great wife would be great. Healthy children would be wonderful. All these things would be great, but God, I'm not asking you for those things. I'm not asking you to get me out of this mess I'm in. I'm not asking you all these things. I'm asking you one thing, that you would provide me a place I could serve you. Amen. That ought to be a prayer of ours. One place. I need a place. How about one thing uh, is to follow the Lord? 
follow the Lord. Luke chapter number 18. I'm going to go back over here in the New Testament. Luke chapter number 18. And he says down here in verse number 22, he says this. Backing up just a little bit. Verse number 17, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall no wise enter therein. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not kill. No, do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And all the parents said... Yeah. There's no age limit on that, by the way. No age limit. All right. And so he says, and he said, All these have I kept from my youth. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, He said, Yet thou lackest one thing. Oh, you've done all the do's and the don'ts. You've been pretty good at, 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 at what people can see. Oh, you've done good about what people can see. You've done good in all the big ones. It ain't hard to not to kill. Most, day, most days, you know, depending on where you're driving at. It ain't hard not to steal. It ain't hard not to commit adultery. Just be faithful. It ain't hard not to serve other gods. It ain't difficult. But he said, there's one thing that you lack in here. And he told him, he said, go sell all your stuff. Give to the poor. And then he said this. The one thing was this. The one thing wasn't sell all your stuff. The one thing was follow me. See, if you're not willing to sell your stuff, you'll never make a good follower. Like the preacher said this morning, Brother Matt said this morning during his, during his devotional, he said, it ain't your money. It's God's money. God can take it. You might wake up tomorrow. I, we, we, we had a deal happen one day, and I mean, it was a, it was a pretty major deal uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, and the first thing I did, I called Tiffany. I said, well, we, we, we've had a, had a problem. And she said, you didn't even preach against the devil this week. I said, well, he's mad anyway. <clears throat> but you know what? Nan, any boo-boo, if a devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. I don't really care. Hey, man. It ain't my no house, God. If God wants to protect his stuff, God protect it. Hey, man. But how about one thing, to serve the Lord? How about one thing, to follow the Lord? How about one thing, to know for sure about something? Just to know for sure about something. It's amazing these days how many Christians, how many saved people, church folks, that just are so unsure about everything. James said, double-minded man's unstable in all his way. You ought to get some things nailed down. Look at Hebrews says, Brethren, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. We ought to get a good hold on some stuff. Over in John chapter number 9, there's a man, and he was blind, and Jesus come through there, and Jesus healed him. Well, they just some Pharisees went to swarming, like Pharisees do. That's right. Went to swarming. You know, they'll be, they'll be Pharisees watching Facebook Live this morning, and they'll say stuff like, now they may not say it to us, but they'll say stuff like, I can't believe they got all that stuff up there on that stage. I can't believe they got all them Christmas trees and all them decorations up there on that stage. Don't they know that's church house? That's a, 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 first of all, that ain't no stage. Amen. That's right. That ain't for performing. It's a platform to promote yes, Jesus sir. Christ is what that's for. And secondly, I don't really care what they think. Amen. It's for VBS. I assure you it bothers me a whole more, a lot more than it bothers you. Amen. I'm, I'm anxiety. I'm, I'm cumbered, Lord. I'm careful. Amen. But they come, and Jesus healed this blind man. And here come in Pharisees. That blind, he went leaping, shouting, praising the Lord. They said, they said, okay, who did this? He's like, well, I don't know. Some guy walked by, I didn't see him until he was done. He's gone before I really could see very good. He said, I don't know. This is an original. He's like, I don't know. And they said, was it that sinner? He said, well, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. He said, but this one thing I know, I was blind, now I see. I see a lot of theological discussions in a lot of different forums on a lot of different places, and some of that stuff I'll look at and I go, I hear new phrases all the time. I heard a new phrase the other day, a cessation Baptist. I don't even know what that means. So don't ask, I don't know. I really don't care what it means. 
I'm a, and, and one person said, well, somebody put on, on, on a Facebook deal, you know, what kind of Baptist are you? And had on there a Southern Baptist, Independent Baptist, Missionary Baptist, Free Will Baptist, General Baptist, all kind of stuff like that. Some of them I heard of, some of them I didn't. Well, I'm a historical Baptist. I ain't sure what that is neither. And I'm going to get a lot of flack over all that. But I don't know, and I don't really don't care. Hey, man. Huh? I'm a Baptist. I don't, yeah, that's so I used to go to church. Yeah, we got a lot of historical Baptists. Hey, man. <laughs> But I don't know about all that kind of stuff. But I'm like the man that was blind in the... Amen. He said, now I was blind. I know that. I was lost. I know that. I was living in my sin. I know that. And I know one night at an altar, after feeling guilty before an almighty God, something moved in my heart and said, you're guilty. That preacher's right. That Bible's right. You're wrong. You're guilty. You're on your way to hell. You're missing something spiritually. And I said, Lord, you're right. I'm convinced of that. And I got up. I walked down that altar and I had on a Leonard Skinner t-shirt and tore up blue jeans and long hair and a terrible past and a messed up home and a messed up marriage and a messed up life. And I walked down that night got on the right side of that altar and I called out to an almighty God and I asked the Lord to forgive me and to save me. And I trusted in Jesus Christ. What he done at Calvary? Hey, I, what that preacher? I don't know. Hey, historical Baptist, primitive Baptist, hard shell Baptist. Hey, but whatever it is, I don't know. Hey, a bunch of stuff about it, I don't know. But one thing I know, I was lost and on my way to hell. And I asked the Lord to forgive me and save me. He fixed my marriage. He fixed my home. He fixed my life. He fixed my relationship. He fixed my addiction. He fixed my problems. He put my life back together. He taught me to preach. He gave me a Bible. He put me in a suit. Thank the God of glory. I don't know about all that other stuff, but I do know this. One thing, I got a hold of one thing. I was blind. I was lost and on my way to hell. But July the 29th, 2001, God changed something in me. God changed me. You can call it salvation. You can call it regeneration. You can call it justification. You can call it isolation. I don't know. You can call it whatever you want to. But I know that that night when I cried out to God, amen, hey, that God came down and God done something in me and He changed me and He made me complete and He made me whole and there's a whole lot of that other stuff. I don't know. But there's one thing I know. One thing I know. I'm going to fly away one of these days. If I'm not saved, I don't know how to get saved. If heaven ain't going to be my home, I don't know how to tell you to get there. I've done what the Bible says to do, and I know this. You say, well, Brother Robert does. What was it? What was the question? What was the question? Where's he at? Where's my Bible scholar, my young Bible scholar? Here he is. What's the question? After Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch and he was caught away, amen, and he was translated into another place, was he wet or was he dry when he got there? I don't know. Did Adam and Eve have belly buttons? I don't know. But one thing I do know, amen, is I, are we going to wear underwear under them white robes in glory? I don't know. But I do know one thing, that I was lost and now I'm found. Amen. Amen. There's a lot I don't know, but this one thing I do. That dude right there, he'll ask you questions that blow your mind. Some of these kids are pretty sharp in the Bible. Amen. Amen. I don't know it all, but I know that. I don't know what God will do to your life when you fix that one thing or do that one thing or don't do that one thing. I don't know what God will do, but I know this, that if you'll ask Him to be your Savior, He'll forgive your sins and save your soul. We're talking about adding on to this thing, spending all of this money, a huge undertaking, a great expense. And it still overwhelms me at how much it costs. All, but, and I was talking to Brother Kurt Howard about it one time, and I said, I don't, I'm really unsure what to do. He said, let me tell you this. I, mean, I don't know how many times they've built and added on. I don't, they do it every year. I don't know. But I said, and I said, uh, he said, I can't tell you what, what will happen if you add on. But I can tell you what will happen if you don't. Nothing. Nothing. I said, well, I've seen enough of nothing. Amen. We want something. This one thing, one thing. He said, I was blind, and now I see. One thing, one thing the Apostle Paul told him over in Philippians chapter number 3. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. 
He said, I don't have it all figured out. I don't claim to be some spiritual uh, know-it-all. He said, I don't claim to be at the top of the pyramid. He said, but this one thing I know, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I ain't got it all figured out, but I got this figured out. I'm forgetting about my past. I can't do nothing about it. I'm not dwelling on it. Luke 9, 62 says, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. didn't say you couldn't go. You said you wasn't fit for it. There's a lot of people in the military who ain't fit to be in the military. Amen. Amen. I know this. I got something I can hold on to. This message was prompted this morning. Brother Matt got up here and and I had a message on the sufferings. Oh, it's a great theological, deep theological. I'm talking about the sufferings, not the suffering, singular, but the sufferings, plural, of Christ, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual. It's all those kinds. Of great, I'm talking about great theological Bible college. You know, people go, oh, boy, that preacher. He... Brother Matt said something about Esther this morning. And the one thing, and God said, there's your message. I said, Lord, I done got two. He said, there's your message. I said, but Lord. I mean, I, I, I sat out on the golf cart last night and outlined my message in the yard. He said, there's your message. I said, okay. That's it. That's my message. Flip or flop, that's my message. Hey, Amen. And see what God does. But Esther, I got to think about Esther. I got to think about people in the Bible. The one thing. One thing they did. The Bible says Moses choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. That proves Moses wasn't a Baptist. Baptist to choose the pleasure of sin. Ah, oh, after I once saved, I always saved. Well, if you want to go out and live in sin, you probably need to check your salvation. You probably, you're probably going to hell. Amen. If you can enjoy sin, there's something wrong with your salvation. Amen. We all sin. Brother Randy Bailey, he said, strange thing, once you get saved, you can't even enjoy sin no more. I said, that's right. It'll haunt you. It'll haunt you. Esther, or Moses, chose rather godliness. Whatever that cost him, Abraham chose to follow God. Made a difference for all of us. And what about Judas? Judas was such a good disciple that when Jesus said, one of you will betray me, everybody said, is it me? Is it me? Is it I? Lord, am I going to betray you? Judas was such a good church member. He was the treasurer, by the way. <laughs> Amen. He was the treasurer, by the way. Amen. He kept the money. John said, is, who is it? John didn't say, is it I? John knew. He said, I'm not going to do something like that. Who is it? They couldn't even tell who it was. Now, if, you come, if, if we had us a little meeting and, you, and I said, somebody in this church is going to betray me, I'll probably have somebody in mind. And you would probably know who. I don't know. Maybe not. But one thing Judas done, one thing, one thing changed his life forever. Even the devil is convicted about sin. Judas was so convicted about it, he went out and hung himself. Thomas, Thomas was a good apostle. He was a good one. Until one thing. He said, I don't believe it. And now we call him what? One thing. Peter did a great job. I mean, he was the only one that was going to pull out and he was going to kill for Christ. He pulled out that. I believe he was trying to cut Malchus's head off. I believe he was. Y'all know why he, cut it, why, he, why he pulled out his knife, don't you? Because he didn't have a gun. Absolutely. Amen. If Peter had a gun, then Jesus would have been pulling nine millimeters rounds out of Malchus. Amen. But he cut off his ear. I mean, he, he, but then what did he do? What's the one thing Peter is universally known for? Denying Christ. One thing. There's one thing 
God expects of you. There's one thing that you can do that might change things forever. Ruth did one thing, didn't she? And if you look at it, it don't look like it's a great big thing. She just stayed with her mother-in-law. She just made a decision. She said, no, your people are going to be my people. Your God's going to be my God. Amen. She's in the genealogy of Christ. That's right. One thing. One thing. I remember one thing a preacher said at a revival one night caused me to accept Christ as my Savior. One thing. One thing. Just one thing. Have you ever done one thing for God? Just one thing that you've done just for God without any benefit, without expecting any return, just one thing, all for God, just a gift to God. One thing that God could bless. One thing to start doing. What's the one thing this morning that's on your mind? I know there's one thing that's on your mind that God wants you to do that you've been putting off for whatever reason it is. Maybe the reason is you don't feel like you're capable. Maybe the reason is you're scared. Maybe the reason is who knows what. But there's one thing. It could be salvation. It could be baptism. It could be church membership. It could be you. It could be surrendering to ministry. It could be helping. In, it could be a million different things. But one thing. Maybe there's one thing that God's been on you about stopping. Maybe there's one thing that's holding you back from being what you think other people are. One thing. That one sin that God's been convicting you about and convicting you about and every... Oh, I know where you are. Been there. Been there. I've dealt with stuff before and every time I go to church, the preacher preaches about it or somebody testifies about it or, or there's a devotional about it, go to a revival and the evangelist and, and I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there going, okay, Lord, I get it. Give the invitation. I'm going to the altar. I'm talking to you about it. I get it. For a month, Lord, you've been on me about this. Every time I turn, I can go down the highway, listen, pull up a Jack Hiles message, one I've heard ten times, and he'd be preaching. All of a sudden, God changes it into what I've been dealing with. Amen. That's how God does. Okay, Lord, I'll do it. I'll get the one thing right. I'll do the one thing. I'll stop doing the one thing. One thing this morning. One decision. Sister Holly, would you go ahead and prepare to, to go ahead and come up here and play? One decision. Now, we're not done yet. I'm just giving her some time to get through the mountains here. <laughs> but one thing, one thing that might change your life, it might be the thing that changes someone else. It just might be. And it might seem like a small thing. But there are no small things with the Lord. There are no small things. That morning, that little boy, a real little boy, the Bible calls him a lad, a real little boy left home with a bucket lunch and ended up out in the wilderness where there's 5,000 plus people and Jesus used those five loaves and two fishes. Jesus used that. It's in the Bible. One thing. Just one little thing that might change someone forever, might change your life forever. What is the one thing? Stand, if you would, this morning. The one thing, the one sacrifice that you know in your soul that it, it's all about God because you're not going to make that up. Well, I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's God. I promise you, if your flesh is apprehensive about it, it's the Lord. One thing, one move that needs to be made. One move, one step out to an altar. One thing that you need to clear up between you and God. Maybe one thing you need to clear up between your spouse. Maybe one thing you need to clear up with someone at church. <coughs> one thing.